Hi, Bob Hughes here with JD Squared, and in this video, we're going to talk about the water beds and the adjustable level system available for our multi platform machines. And by multi platform, I'm talking about the PVDs, the MAD MPs, those machines there. These machines were designed to be changeable in the field. They could literally change your personality from a wood router to a, a CNC plasma cutter, water bed, the whole bit. Anytime you feel like you have the machine two or three years, you could change it out. Now to do that, everything is CNC machined. The entire top frame and everything is machined true. Now what you're looking at right here is a, uh, a multi-platform machine that has been outfitted with a stainless steel water bed and the transfer tank system. Now we make the beds available in mild steel, cheaper than a stainless steel obviously, and stainless steel. The difference is a stainless steel table is a buy at one solution and you're done for the life of the machine. 30 years, the table is just as good as it was the day you bought it. A mild steel system, you're going to need to use a rust inhibitor solution. For instance, the company made Pike, uh, Pico, spelled P-I-C-O, which we're very high on, a very good company. Um, they make a great liquid right there, and that will help prevent the tank from rusting. If you're going to buy a mild steel system, and you're not going to use a rust inhibitor, expect to replace it in a few years. It might, three, five years, you're probably going to go away because that's, you know, metal and rust, you know. So anyway, you're looking at the system right here. I don't have the slats in the machine. I wanted you to see the sump openings. And then I'm going to give you an idea of how the whole operation works. First of all, let's talk about the, the water bed itself. What we wanted to do on the new machines is we're trying to reduce the cost burden of shipping this stuff to a customer. Uh, we're in the middle of Tennessee, we have a lot of customers on the west coast, and it costs a lot of money to ship, you know, large weldments that far. So what we did is we broke the water beds up into sections. So a 4x4 four four machine, one section. A 4x8 machine, we have two sections joined together, you can see it right here. And then on a 5x10 machine, we actually have three sections. Now, the machines are sent out. Um, in standard drain format. There's a bung that's welded to it with a plug and everything. You could hook plumbing to it if you want to allow you to drain the fluid out. Um, that's how they come standard. Now, if the machine is ordered sump tank ready, and let me show you a sump tank right here. This is a sump tank. Clearly, this one is, um, see the pretty weld, so it's stainless steel also. And these sump tanks here bolt underneath the machine right there. And the way they're designed is we're using an inch and a half pipe here, and we're using two of them on a four by eight, which means we have twin pipes feeding this thing, and we're looking for a rapid transfer of the water either into the bed or out of the bed. <clears throat> they also it allows us to put our hands in here, if we develop any kind of slurry buildup in here, we could put our hands in here and it acts as a, uh, as a, a, as a trap actually. And we can, get the, we can get the slurry out fairly easily. Now, we ship these tanks, either some tank ready, which means nothing more than we've already laser cut the holes, you know, for the sub tank to be bolted on, or standard drain format. Don't worry. If you have a tank system that you purchased for a standard drain format, then we supply the, the, the program that will actually cut it out for you using the plasma system because that's what they do, you know? So you don't have to worry about that right there. Now, like I said, I, I have no slats in this machine. I want you to see the, the water transferred up and down. Now, there's other ways to get fluid in and out of a table. One of them, let me set this down over here. One of them is to use a transfer pump. Now, I bought this one here from Home Depot today for $98. It'll move 360 gallons an hour. That sounds pretty impressive, right? Here's the problem. This is a 4x8 tank right here, and it holds 103 gallons. So for that thing to move it out in the, in the real world, not their perfect world, in the real world, you're looking just shy of 20 minutes to fill this tank up or drain the tank down. This particular system will do it in 1 minute 40 seconds. So that's something to consider right there. And when we were designing this system, we looked at some of the solutions out there available, and some people go, oh, get those rubber bladders that they, you know, move water around the back of pickup trucks or buy tanks and all. There's a few problems with that, and one of them is the small openings. They also take about 20 minutes to do it, 
it was way too long. So we ended up engineering a transfer tank system that was optimized to move the water in and out very quickly. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get the water coming up here, and then we'll talk about how the system works and a couple other issues that could be actual dangers in the real world. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this valve, and this is the air valve to allow the air out of the tank system, and we're going to open up the air valve that is going in. <clears throat> so we've done that. You'll now see the water start rushing back up, and you see it's, it's moving up at a pretty good pace. We're going to fill this tank in one, hour, in one minute, 40 seconds. So we're moving right at about 40-something gallons. Um, is that right? Yeah. <clears throat> No, we're moving about 55 gallons a minute. So we're really moving some liquid, and you can see it coming up pretty quick. Now, you notice the liquid is green. That's that PICO solution, the rust inhibitor. That's the color. It's green. Now, what's happening, the way the system's working, picture a diving bell. We're forcing air into the top of the tank. The water pickups on the rear, remember, there's twin inch-and-a-half pipe water pickup. That's why it's moving the air so fast, is basically being displaced down coming up through the tubes, hence filling the tank. So we have no electric pumps to burn up, like slurry tearing them up. It's a very simple, safe system. <clears throat> now right here, we've got a regulator that will regulate it down to 10, 15 PSI. This is not a pressure vessel. We make them really strong, but it's not a pressure vessel. We also have safety relief valves on the tank itself to blow off at 10 to 15 PSI. We have an air valve here that I could shut off at any time I want to maintain the water level wherever I want it at. And then, of course, when I'm ready to drain it, we're going to open up this valve. Notice it's a large valve to let the air out. It turns out the bigger the valve, the faster that she moves the air out. So that's why we put a big valve there. Now, this whole tank system is designed to slide up under the machine. There's a cover on the machine that goes here. You can see the bolts right there where it would attach. And there's an opening in it so that everything looks nice. You can get your hands, you can read the gauges, you can see everything. And um, it, it's just the way it is. Obviously, I don't have the cover on there so you can see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and stop it right here. <clears throat> and um, that's about the level that you're going to cut at. You're, about, you're going to be about a half inch below your plate. The water will splash up on your plate, keep everything nice and cool if you're doing steel. Now, another feature, <clears throat> the sump openings are in the middle of the tank. And the reason for that is, is if you run out of water in your transfer tank, you're now pumping air, bubble, bubble, bubble. And so we put it here in the middle so that it doesn't try to splash out. Plus, you're going to have slats in here and a plate on top of it, so it'll minimize that. So that's why they're in the middle. We're even thinking about how much splash this thing puts out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start lowering the water down on this system. You hear the surge of air? And you'll watch how fast she's going to come down. Now, we're going to stop it here in a second at about an inch and a half down. An inch to inch and a half down, and I'll tell you why. Okay, let's go ahead and stop it here. Okay. <clears throat> what we just did, we went from a condition to where the, the water bed is optimized to cut steel to where it's okay to cut aluminum. And you're going, what's the difference? <clears throat> if you cut aluminum it builds up hydrogen underneath the plate. So a lot of manufacturers, plasma manufacturers, straight up tell you, don't cut aluminum on a waterbed tank. That's, that's just a known fact. Um, <clears throat> however, you can do it, and they say, well, you need an air gap underneath an inch, inch and a half. So that's what we're telling you to do. <clears throat> if you're cutting aluminum, you want to see an inch and a half air gap, a one inch to inch and a half air gap underneath it. And what we would like to see you do is to put some kind of fan on the unit to where you're moving the air underneath that plate. You do not want the hydrogen to build up. Everybody knows about the Hindenburg, same thing. They've literally had plates explode off the machine vertical because the hydrogen is lit up underneath it. So this system here, I can cut aluminum on it. Now I turn right around, open up my valves, my water's on the way back up, I'm ready to cut steel. By the way, if OSHA walks through your door, you're cutting aluminum in a water table and it's high, just watch out, you know. They're going to get you. They know about that little hazard, you know. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and lower this thing down right here. Now, the tanks are made to where what will happen is 
If you want to clean the tank out, you are going to have to drain the fluid out of the top of the tank. So, well, even though there's drains on the tank that you can hook up and plumb out externally, we have found out that one of the easy ways to do it is to siphon it out. So, um, in, instead of going out and buying a $100 pump, you buy half inch vinyl tubing right here, stick it in there, siphon it out, you know. Now, since we would have transferred all the water from the tank, well not all of it, there'll probably be about eight or so gallons left in the transfer tank, up to here, we can now take off the side panels, get up in there, disconnect the rubber connectors, and the entire transfer tank system will slide out of the machine. It's heavy, but it's not that bad. It'll, it'll slide out of the machine. And then you can clean the tank out. And that's why on the back side of the tank, you can't see them here, but where the water pickups at all, that's where the drains are. Now, if you notice right here, we've drained down into the sump. This is what I was talking about. You can get your fingers in there. But the other big advantage of this is for somebody who is cutting small pieces and they fall through the slats, well, you can imagine if you don't have a way to raise and lower the table, this is a real problem finding your parts. Where the heck did they go? You know, you literally got to start removing slats and feeling around in the sludgy water. This kind of system here allows you to easily clean the tanks, find your parts, you can cut aluminum safely. Um, so it's really the ideal solution. <clears throat> now, that's really about the only thing I have to say. There's other videos available showing you how to install the, the water bed and everything. But right now, this was just the overview of the whole system, and I think we've covered it all. Anyway, thank you for watching. Happy cutting, and talk to you later. Bye.